Sarah Batman was born in 1789 at the Gamtos River in what is now known as the Eastern Cape. She belonged to the cattle herding Gunakwasab group of the Khoi Khoi. Sarah grew up on the colonial farm where her family most probably worked as servants. Her mother died when she was aged two and her father, who was a cattle driver, died when she reached adolescence. Sarah married a Khoi Khoi man who was a drummer and they had one child together who died shortly after birth. Due to colonial expansion, the Dutch came into conflict with the Khoi Khoi. As a result, people were gradually absorbed into the labor system. When she was 16 years old, Sarah's fiancé was murdered by Dutch colonists. Soon after, she was sold into slavery to a trader named Pieter Willem Caesar, who took her to Cape Town where she became a domestic servant to his brother. It was during this time that she was given the name Sarji, a Dutch diminutive of Sarah. On 29 October 1810, Sarah allegedly signed a contract with an English ship surgeon named William Dunlop, who was also a friend of Caesar and his brother Hendrik. Apparently, the terms of her contract were that she would travel with Hendrik Caesar and Dunlop to England and Ireland to work as a domestic servant and be exhibited for entertainment purposes. She was to receive a portion of earnings from her exhibitions and be allowed to return to South Africa after five years. Two reasons make her signing appear dubious. The first was that she was an illiterate and came from a cultural tradition that did not write or keep records. Secondly, the Caesar families experienced financial woes and it was suspected that they used Sarah to earn money. Sarah Batman's large buttocks and unusual coloring made her the object of fascination by the colonial Europeans who presumed that they were racially superior. Dunlop wanted Sarah to come to London and become an oddity for display. She was taken to London where she was displayed in a building in Piccadilly, a street that was full of various oddities like the knee plus ultra of hideousness and the greatest deformity in the world. English men and women paid to see Sarah's half-naked body displayed in a cage that was about a meter and a half high. She became an attraction for people from various parts of Europe. During her time with Dunlop and Hendrik Caesar, the campaign against slavery in Britain was in full swing and as a result, the treatment of Batman was called into question. Her employers were brought to trial but faced no real consequences. They produced a document that had allegedly been signed by Sarah Batman and her own testimony which claimed that she was not being mistreated. Her contract was however amended and she became entitled to better conditions, greater profit share and warm clothes. After four years in London, in September 1814, she was transported from England to France and upon arrival, Henry Caesar sold her to Riox, a man who showcased animals. He exhibited her around Paris and reaped financial benefits from the public's fascination with Sarah's body. He began exhibiting her in a cage alongside a baby rhinoceros. Her trainer would order her to sit or stand in a similar way that circus animals were ordered. At times, Batman was displayed almost completely naked, wearing little more than a tan loincloth, and she was only allowed that due to her insistence that she cover what was culturally sacred. She was nicknamed Hutton Tut Venus. Her constant display attracted the attention of George Cuvier, a naturalist. He asked Rios if he would allow Sarah to be studied as a science specimen to which Rios agreed. As from March 1815, Sarah was studied by French anatomists, zoologists and physiologists. Cuvier concluded that she was a link between animals and humans. Thus, Sarah was used to help emphasize the stereotype that Africans were oversexed and a lesser race. Sarah Batman died in 1816 at the age of 26. It is unknown whether she died from alcoholism, smallpox or pneumonia. Kavya obtained her remains from local police and dissected her body. He made a plaster cast of her body, pickled her brain and genitals and placed them into jars which were placed on display at the Musée de l'Homme, Museum of Man, until 1974. The story of Sarah Batman resurfaced in 1981 when Stephen J. Gold, a paleontologist, wrote about her story in his book, The Mismeasure of Man where he criticized racial science. 
Following the African National Congress, ANC's victory in the South African elections, President Nelson Mandela requested that the French government return the remains of Sarah Batman so that she could be laid to rest. The process took eight years as the French had to draft a carefully worded bill that would not allow other countries to claim treasures taken by the French. Finally, on the 6th of March 2002, Sarah Batman was brought back home to South Africa where she was buried. On 9th August 2002, Women's Day, a public holiday in South Africa, Sarah was buried at Hanke in the Eastern Cape province. And there you have it, a glimpse into the life and legacy of Sarah Batman, a woman whose tragic story continues to resonate and inspire us to be better advocates for social justice. If you found this video enlightening, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until next time, cheers, have a good one.